Today, I'm going to show you some of my favorite Logic Pro X tips and tricks, along with examples of how they are being used by today's biggest pop artists. So let's take a look. The first tip we're going to look at today is used in Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo. So once we have our fade tool selected, we can hold down command and click and drag across the audio file. And now we have a fade at the end of this audio. But if we right click or control click, if you have three tools selected, we can select slow down and that will emulate a tape slowdown. Let's have a listen to the piano without any slowdown. Just one B flat major chord that holds. And then with the tape slowdown. Sounds super cool, but we're getting some extra artifacts at the end of this piano roll down that we don't want. But what they do is they just automate the volume. So if we press A, click on the track, we can see volume selected here. And then we just drop the volume down when that other piano starts. Perfect piano note. And then cuts. And I know we were perfect. Amazing. For tip number two, we're going to look at Elo Milo by Billie Eilish. Let's have a listen. Where did you go? I should know. Vocal width is super important in Billy's productions, so we have to look at stereo panning. In Logic Pro X, it's super important we know the difference between mono track and stereo track. And we can tell that in our audio tracks. Go to the top left here, we can see two inputs, makes it a stereo, or you can change it to a mono if you click on it and we have only one input. Now in the case when we have a stereo input, we have to watch out for our panning. If we right click, our two finger click, we can see there's a difference between balance, stereo pan, binaural pan. Balance takes either the left signal or the right signal or a mixture between the both of them. So if we select balance and go fully to the left, this is going to take only the left hand signal of our stereo audio. If we two finger click and go on stereo pan, all of a sudden we're looking at panics, we're taking the full signal. So whenever you have a stereo audio track, two finger click, open up the stereo pan, go to the bottom, move that up to the top. Now it's acting as if it was mono. Both the right and the left are at one single point. And now we're able to pan that stereo track as if it was a mono track. You're not losing any of the signal as you would if you were using the balance pan. And this type of stereo panning can be very useful. Say you have a string section and you want only the violins to be maybe from the left to a third in as you would if you were facing an orchestra that's how you'd hear it that's how you'd see it so like that for maybe our violin ones maybe something like that for our cellos and then maybe something like that for our violas and then all of them have their own space so they still have that stereo effect but we can control them a little bit more precisely Tip number three is where we have harmony. Two out wide, hard panned, and then we have two that are panned 40 left and 40 right. Click on the top, hold down shift, click at the bottom, go shift, command G. And then we've made a sum group, which is pretty much the same as an auxiliary bus, but visually it's a lot easier to see them all connected together and we can collapse all those tracks in if we want to. So just like an auxiliary track, we can put on effects onto all these vocals at the same time. So say we wanted to EQ these interestingly. Wow. So making group tracks is a great way to collapse your tracks and keep them all tidily organized, which helps in the long run and works as an auxiliary track. So you can put effects on all of them at one time. For tip number four, we're going to be looking at Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X. Let's have a listen. Call me when you want, call me when you need, call me in the morning, I'll be on the way. Here we're going to be looking at the small brain, big brain and galaxy brain of how to move the playhead and play back the track. So at the beginning, you might be small braining it. We click at the top, we press spacebar to play. Call me when you want. The next level might be you move your playhead to the top and you double click. Call me you want. But our galaxy brain will be moving your cursor anywhere in the screen, holding down shift and then double clicking. Call me you want. When we're jumping around the track, that's a galaxy brain move. Tip number four has really helped me speed up my workflow and that's by getting three tools up there at the top. By default, you'll only have two. We go to Logic Pro X, Preferences, General. We click on Editing, so we're changing what right click does. So if we select Is Assignable to a Tool, then we will have three tools ready to go at the top. The one on the left is when we just normal click or left click. The one in the middle will be our Command click. The one on the right will be a right click or two finger click. In order to get that right click back, you need to hold down Control and click. And then you'll have the old right click tools. The great thing about having the three tools is they'll also pop up in our piano roll here. So you can use them for say velocity or whatever you want. For my main three tools, I love to have the pointer tool for normal click, fade tool ready to go with our command. So if I just need to fade any audio tracks, I love having the marquee tool. There's so many great uses for the marquee tool. So if we right click and drag over, say our kicks here. So this is our kick pattern for every two bars. We could use command or to duplicate or a personal favorite of mine is command J. And what we're doing is we're consolidating that into one audio file using our fade tool. That's like a bonus 5.5 tip. 
Tip number six is specifically for you guys who need a little bit more CPU. Like myself, you might not have the most powerful laptop and you find your Logic Pro X file getting a little bit too big to handle. So if we right click or control click on any of our instrument tracks over here on the left and select configure track header. So we could use option T as well to close and open it up. Here we have freeze. So let's solo our banjo and steel drums here. So you can just freeze them, leave them there and they're happy out and you save CPU space. Ooh, it's a lot of freezing. <laughs> <laughs> so now Logic Pro X has frozen those two tracks and you can see, I was going to say greater, they're more blued out. So we can see those instruments aren't being read by Logic. They're pretty much just playing back a frozen track. If you're struggling with CPU issues, check out the freeze button. Our final tip seven is beautifully simple. But when I started streaming over one year ago, all my viewers were like, why are you going over to the inspection tool over here and making all your edits from there instead of pressing X and opening up the mixer. So use X to open and close your mixer. It makes life so much easier, especially if you're only using one monitor. If you have any favorite Logic Pro X tips or tricks, feel free to leave them down below in the comments so we can all help each other out. Also, let me know if this video helped you at all. And if you'd like to see more videos just like this, well, I really do hope this helped in some way, whether it be with your creativity, your efficiency of getting around Logic Pro X, or maybe even saving some CPU. You don't have to buy the new laptop quite just yet. <laughs> Best of luck with the music, Megan. Cheers.